But what about organic food? Nah. Now I can only give some glimpses of what we found. What can we do about it? I'm going to talk about a topic called origin branding. And, and this is based on research that I've been so lucky to collaborate with some very bright people about. Um, my two <coughs> co-workers at, uh, at the MAP Center, uh, Susanne and Jessica. Are you both here? Can you? Where? There. Susanne is there. Yeah. And uh, we have been so lucky to collaborate with um, both Organic Denmark, Panile will be here after me and, and tell about their work with export and with also the, the, the Danish uh, the, the, uh, Agriculture and Food Council. And in our uh, reference group, we've had a key person from Ala and from uh, Freeland Food, the subsidiary of uh, Danish Crown. So we have been like in close contact with, with the sector in this project here. Now, when you hear the term origin branding, I think most of you will think about Visit Denmark. This is not a video, actually, just a screen dump of Visit Denmark's homepage. Like we are marketing countries as destinations, uh, but origin branding is actually much more than that. Like it's in general uh, the study of how a country's image affects attitude toward products and services, and how you how we are able using marketing management techniques to promote both the country as such, but also its products uh, in, uh, in, in general at international markets. Uh, and in, the, in our case, we focused on organic food, um, which is, of course, part of the very export-oriented Danish food sector. But like, if we look at organic food as a special product, also organic food is, as has been said like also earlier today, a fast-growing segment of the food sector. Like it's, it's of the specialty, like so-called sustainability food. Organic food is by far the most successful of these kind of differentiated food. And the demand for organic food is growing. Worldwide, it's still mostly concentrated in Europe and North America. But it's growing, and it's growing faster than domestic production in many countries, which, of course, has led to increased international trade and increased import, which of course then creates opportunities also for countries that has a strong export position in the area. Uh, in Denmark, there is a strong and increasing focus uh, on export of organic food. Like the organic sector is much, it's much less export oriented than the general organic sector if you look at percentages, but it's growing. And uh, the, it, according to the current export strategy, the goal is and to have a yearly increase of more than 10% uh, in, in the export of organic food, which, uh, to my knowledge, is actually surpassed. So it's actually going quite well. And many, uh, many um, companies in the sector are increasingly export-oriented. But uh, in terms of trying to give advice to the sector, at least from like academic, uh, uh, an academic point of view, it's, it's a problem that there's actually quite limited research on, you could say, the intersection between uh, organics and uh, the focus on country image, or as I mentioned, call it here with the abbreviation COO, which means country of origin. Country of origin is probably the most researched aspect, both on food and products in general, in international marketing. But the combination between, there's only a handful of products that actually investigates the combination between organic and, and uh, country origin. We published a review of this literature in our project. The objective of the project, we call it the Sumpwit project, was to then to investigate consumer evaluation and choices of imported organic foods in general and specifically from Denmark, and examine the combined effect of organic labeling and country origin in four export, export markets, 
uh, and like we'll focus on like of course what the sector was mostly interested in is like how Denmark is perceived, how is Denmark perceived as an organic producer and exporter in important export markets and whether or not Denmark's image in export markets create competitive advantage for organic food in these markets. And of course, if not, what can we do about it? Like uh, our focus has mostly been analytic, I like to get the status, but like, of course, also with an eye to the other things. Like we chose to look at four important markets in this research project as already the title of my presentation revealed. Uh, we picked Germany and France in Europe. Germany, of course, because it's like by far Denmark's biggest market. Uh, France, because it's um, in terms, of, if we look at organics, like the size, the biggest organic markets in the world, US is the biggest. The second largest is Germany, and the third is France. And so that was one reason. And of course, France is also very important for Danish Crown, uh, also for, for, especially for hams. The fourth is China. Not so many people know that, but that's actually the case. China used to be an exporter to the West for organic food, but it's now the fourth largest market for organic food. So it's also a very interesting market also for organic food. So we've made it a natural choice. We picked Thailand because it actually, on the consumption side, is very similar to China. It has more or less the same market share for organic food, and it's more or less the same types of segments that buy organic food in Thailand as in China. And we wanted an additional similar country to compare with, so like to see to which extent what we find in China can be generalized to a wider class of countries, or it's just unique for China. Uh, we speak a lot about China as like, unique, but it is also, of course, a class of countries that we are talking about here. Uh, the focus, as you could hear from like my introduction, is on, on the image of a country, country image. What is a country image? A country image can be defined as it's the beliefs that consumers hold about a particular country. Uh, so as, and, and of course we want to study the extent to which a country such as our own has a favorable image or not. Uh, and how do we study that? Like there's of course several ways of going to such a task. We might, and very often actually, if you look into the research, it's very often just inferred from consumer choices. You might also see studies, and like this, the next most common approach would be to use various response scales, where you ask participants, usually a you know, representative sample of the population that you're interested in, to rate your country at various dimensions that reflect various image dimensions of, your, of interest. And then, of course, you might also ask people directly using various qualitative interview techniques. Each of these approaches have different advantages and disadvantages, of course. So, of course, like the best thing would be to combine them, uh, <clears throat> which is what we did. But uh, we um, used three different ways of collecting data to, come to uh, get a picture of uh, Dan Denmark's in image uh, as an organic exporter in these countries. Uh, we did qualitative interviews in stores, in supermarkets selling food, and the well, supermarkets selling organic foods in the different markets. So this was, they, here we, like, we intercepted customers at the point of purchase, like where they were actually contemplating what to buy, and were thinking about, you know, the various aspects. So this would be where like, for instance, uh, a country of origin, like as an information on the package, would, you know, be relevant or not relevant? Like, so we would ask them about uh, whether, like, they considered that some of these products were imported and what it meant to them. Then we used focus groups 
to get like deeper into the reasoning people have. Where do you, in a valid way, explain your reasoning? You do it when you speak to your friends and co-workers during like at a lunch table at work or with friends at home, a topic is on the table and you tell what you think about it and you give your, your justification for your own behavior and your reasoning. So that's what we try to emulate in these group discussions. We, so we had groups of people that were like similar, like they could be friends or co-workers and so on and talking about these issues. Again, like various country image issues. And then of course, the limitations of these approaches is generality. Can we generalize these uh, findings that we find from these methods to the general population? So we followed up with a survey with a representative sample of the population that we were interested in. In this survey, we asked a number of questions about Denmark's image as a, uh, an organic producer. And we also, that's what I've indicated here, we also had them do choices. So we made a choice experiment embedded in our survey to see how their choices would reveal their preferences. Now, I can only give some glimpses of what we found, like, but like in general, in, in terms of like Denmark, some of the information we got, like for instance, in, in, in Asia, like association to Denmark would be like the Little Mermaid or Hans Christian Andersen, like the famous storyteller from far, far back. In, in Europe, like bicycling, for instance, like that's one of the things like Copenhagen, we talk about Copenhagenization, which is about bicycling. Uh, but also the issues that we've had with being tough on refugees and so on, like was something that some of our participants were talking about, uh, of course, like I think we all know, like Denmark was a little bit early on this. Now the whole of Europe is tough. So I think we have gotten rid of that part of actually quite negative image at this point, mostly because it's drowned, not because we've become better. Uh, in, when it comes to food products, what are the kind of associations, like what people know around in the world like I could have said like Kels and Smokea because that's actually like butter cookies. But like also like Karlsberg, probably the best beer in the world. That's the slogan that they know in Asia. And it's a fine slogan. Who can argue about that? It's probably. <laughs> uh, Luapak is also very known. Like many of our, our dairy products has, has like uh, international. But what about organic food? Nah. None really associated. Actually, in Europe, they thought, like, the weather in Denmark? Can they grow food at all? Kind of. <laughs> so it's like, not like the perfect match, it seemed. Now, we, uh, let me go a little bit deeper to, to then, like, in the German market, like, how, 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 like, how many did actually associate Denmark? In the German market, we did the most thorough qualitative interviews because it's our biggest market. So we actually did interviews in three different cities, in Hamburg in the north, the big cities closest to Denmark, Münster and Munich in the south. And so we wanted to, one, one of the things we wanted to find out was, is Denmark more salient in the north than in the south? I mean, we could assume that, but is there a difference here? Like, so, it's a big market. Maybe some of this market is more important than others. So we did actually 255 in-store interviews in Germany, like in these three countries, and uh, two focus groups in, per city. But I, I just, just one key result from, from the um, in-store interviews. We asked them if the product, if the organic food you buy was not from Germany, where would you prefer it to be from? Here's the overall picture. You can see Denmark is mentioned, but very far down here. It's not like particularly preferred. If you look at the three cities, as we kind of expected, in Munich, like nobody mentioned Denmark. <laughs> but like most of them mentioned Austria, the neighboring country that has. Austria is actually next to Denmark, the country of Europe with the highest market share for organic. In Münster, most people mention Netherlands, close to Netherlands. 
should be like easy to understand. In Hamburg, we had hoped for a similar thing, but you can see one thing you can see is that many more people in Hamburg mentioned Denmark than the two other places. So what do we infer from this? One thing we infer, we infer two things. Denmark is not particularly known. We have a problem with being no known and being you know familiarity in all, even in Germany, our most important and neighboring market. Uh, but it matters a lot with distance. Distance matters. Distance matters a lot. Uh, we did the similar things in China and Thailand. It's a little bit more messy, but like what I wanted to, like we did two studies in China and, and, and one in Thailand, smaller samples than in Germany, and in, in, uh, only in one big city in both of them. And in Thailand, it was in Bangkok, and in, in China, it was in Guangzhou. See how many mentioned Denmark. There were actually a person that mentioned Denmark in Thailand, and there was a person mentioning Denmark in China. <laughs> so we, we also don't have a big familiarity or recognition in these countries. That is a challenge. Um, but the challenge is in terms of recognition. Like, how does that, that it's not necessarily matched with regard to attitudes. If people are asked, what is your attitude towards buying organic food from Denmark? We asked that in the survey. And here you see some averages. Like, when we ask in Denmark, very high, it's not any surprise, as there's generally a preference for your national products. So this is just reflecting what already John said, like we prefer our national products. That's the general thing. What is actually could be surprising is that in China and Thailand, the numbers are nearly as favorable as in Denmark. What does that mean? Like, that means, like, that reflects that in, in these countries, in countries of this level, there is a preference for import from developed countries for various reasons. Uh, like, the, uh, there's actually a higher trust in the safety of these products and also, it's like our qualitative research indicated also, they also think that the control and certification is more credible. So that's the major reason there. Germany and France, they don't really like our products apparently. Now, it's of course important why. And the main reason is actually <coughs> that they prefer their own products. They don't like imports if they can avoid it. It's not so much because they prefer products imported from other countries. We investigated that in the choice experiment. We did the choice experiment with two different products, milk and pork chops, and everybody made 12 choices. This was how they were presented to them. You remember in an earlier talk, there was pictures of an online store, like how products were presented in an online store. We made our design so it's very close to how it's presented in an online store. And we varied the label, the price, and the country. Now I'm only going to um, show you, like focus on the origin. Uh, here for Germany, and I will only look at Germany and France for this. Look at, he, he, like this is kind of for, for origin, the preferences. You just think about it in like that higher is better. And as you can see, Denmark is here in the middle, much lower than domestic, like from Germany, but much higher than China, than from China. So in the middle, and in, and that goes for both products. So it's not just limited to one product, it's in general. And if you look then like with the comparative country is Austria. Austria is in general favored as an organic exporter in Germany, but not very much actually. Think about it. Like it, you, it's slightly, but like if you take this whole span of things, it's not so much the competition with Austria that's the big thing. It's the competition with the domestic producers. And it's not, definitely not the competition with the low income countries. And it's the same with France. It's exactly the same. So 
the problem, like the reason why consumers in France and in Germany have a lower, less favorable attitude towards imported product, organic products from Denmark is because they prefer their own products. It's not so much because of competitors from other European countries. That's actually an important finding. Now, we, we also measured, as I said, like we also measured image directly. Country image nowadays is it's a field of study that has evolved, and people that study country image focus on different things, and like which has in the recent years been integrated. Some focus on like the general country image, like the visit Denmark kind of thing. Some pro focus on products from the country, but it's become increasingly uh, a focus on categories such as food, like so our image for food. And uh, what this kind of research indicates, for instance, research by a colleague from CBS, OCS, and, and his coworker, is that the image tends to influ like influence the attitudes towards buying products from the country, which will then influence intentions and, and buying products. If we, uh, again, look at the evidence from, from our survey, uh, we find that this model works completely fine when we study France and Germany. You can see here, if we look at the, like, try to predict the attitude to buying Danish organic milk, it's the same result for pork. Uh, and using these three country image concepts, all the impact goes, uh, are like mediated through the category, that is the image of food from Denmark. And there's a pretty strong impact on the attitude to buying Danish organic food. So, but I, I didn't show the numbers here, but like, like this image is then influenced by the more general images that people would have from Denmark in this hierarchical way. Now, we look at organic food, it's a, like, as I said, an example of a sustainability product. So we would actually assume that in particularly a, a country's green image would have an impact on the attitude towards buying this kind of product. And uh, we also studied that. We, um, we um, had questions that allowed us to measure the environmental country image of Denmark. And we, in, in this model here, as you can see, we checked if, when controlling for these other country image constructs, whether there would be a direct effect on the attitude towards organic food from environmental country image, and it was not. But as you can see here, there was very strong effect of the environmental country image on the country image of Denmark on all these levels, both the food level, but also products in general and the country in general. So at least in, in France and in Germany, our environmental image actually is a very important part, it seems from this study, of like that constitutes how our image also for specific products are. If you, you, with the type of statistical analysis we did, we could measure, we could get a measure of the indirect effects of these, the environmental country image via the others. And as you can see, that indirect effect is nearly as big as the whole effect of the country image. So it's really substantial. The environmental country image is really important at least when we want to predict attitudes towards buying organic milk from Denmark or organic pork. So summing up, and that uh, is about time I can see, uh, it's, um, what we find is like the Denmark's country equity as an origin for organic food product is especially lacking in terms of recognition or like people, uh, knowing that we are there with our products, but it, it, the, our image is generally favorable in terms of trustworthiness and greenness of the image, like there's a number, I didn't show all the details about that, but that's actually the, a fact. In the European markets, the distance to the product is a major liability. 
uh, and it's a liability that needs to be compensated for. And how can we do that? We can, for instance, be economically like competitive when we export uh, hams to France. That's like kind of one, one of the way of compensating, like an old way, but it works if you are effective. In the Asian markets, the export from Denmark, is, and not only in this field, but in many other fields, is challenged by low familiarity. But there is a favorable country image, which creates opportunities to build on. Uh, but exporters also in the Danish food sector and in the Danish organic sector need to be concerned not only on the image of their specific product category, but also our broader image as a country, including and not least our environmental image. Thanks a lot. I think I'll stop here.